Hey everybody, Scott Sprites are here, DocSports.com. It is our update for Tuesday, October 22nd, 2019. I got a free pick coming up in just a moment off of last night's winner with the under in the football game, New England and the Jets staying under the total. We'll get to our next free pick for Tuesday in just a second. First, a quick note. If you have yet to jump on board and grab that discount for the rest of the football season, that's college football and the NFL combined, you can still get 33% off the rest of the football season. Go over to DocSports.com, jump on my homepage, click on uh, the the uh, actual package that you want to buy there the rest of the football season it'll ask for a code and that code is FB season 33 that's FB season 33 all one word FB season 33 get 33% off the rest of the NFL and college football season and you know at DocSports.com you don't have to buy college and pro separately it's all included in one package FB season 33 is that code and again it is 33% off the rest of the football season all right, listen, hey, uh, I told you over the weekend it wasn't a good football weekend for me. However, just for watching these videos, you did at least get to sweep the NFL as we had the Rams here on Sunday and last night again the under uh, between the Patriots and the Jets. More on that coming up in a bit. Here's what's going on for me on Tuesday over at DocSports.com. Let's get to NHL first where we cashed again last night. Five-unit winner last night on the St. Louis Blues, a 3-1 to one win. Uh, we're just rolling right now in the NHL. I told you before the season began that we love early season puck. Uh, so far this season, we are up 21 plus units so far this season already in the NHL. Going back to last year, October, November, my favorite time for the NHL, uh, we are now 34 and 17. 34 and 17, October, November, NHL. Last year than those two months and so far in October this year. And again, up 21 plus units in the NHL so far this season. I will have NHL. It'll be available on Tuesday over at DocSports.com. I got one play in Tuesday night in NHL. Baseball World Series uh, kicks off today on Tuesday, and we've done quite well of late over the last oh, nine days or so, and there haven't been games every single day, but over the last nine days, uh, we produce over 13 units of profit in Major League Baseball, and yes, I will be in action on Tuesday in Game 1 of the World Series. That play available 11.30 a.m. Eastern, 8.30 a.m. Pacific over at DocSports.com. So we got NHL going on for Tuesday where we're red hot, baseball going on for Tuesday, up over 13 units and of course the NBA tips off on Tuesday. I do have a side on Tuesday over at DocSports.com. It'll be available 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. We're going to be in action right out of the blocks, uh, which we don't always do opening night or two of the NBA, but we do this season. We've got a side in one of Tuesday's two games. It'll be available again 1 p.m. Eastern on Tuesday over at DocSports.com. Excuse me. All right, you know what it is before we get to the free pick today. It is our NFL recap day every Tuesday throughout the course of the season. We do this with our videos, and so these videos are a little bit longer than most uh, when it comes to these Tuesday NFL videos. We'll try to keep it as short as possible. And again, not in schedule order, just as we're making the notes uh, each and every Sunday and Monday. Here we go. Jaguars over the Bengals by a score of 27-17. You know this game was 10-9. Uh, Jags trailed several minutes into the fourth quarter of this one. Total pushed if you got it late. Andy Dalton picked off at the Jags 10 yard line down 17 to 10 with about eight minutes to go. He threw a pick six at his own 25 with about 420 to go difference in the game in that one. Bengals in a tight game still couldn't run the football. That's a big problem for them. But for the Jags, Fournette, 29 carries, 131 yards. Minshew, only 15 of 32. He had 255 yards, one touchdown and no pick. And uh, Dalton, man, the season's just getting longer for Dalton. Three interceptions, only one touchdown. One of the problems, as I mentioned, is the Bengals can't run the football. Football, Joe Mixon, 10 carries for two yards. The Jags, by the way, just one touchdown and six red zone trips in this game. Buffalo knocks off the Dolphins 31 to 21. This was a 14 to 9 Dolphin lead through three quarters. They had first and goal inside the five, in fact, late in the third quarter, up 14 to 9 did the Dolphins, but they threw a pick two plays later, did Ryan Fitzpatrick and the Bills. Well, they were up 24 14 with inside two minutes to go. So uh, there were basically 14 points scored in the final oh, less than two minutes of game time. Uh, we saw the Dolphins actually outgain the Bills 381 to 305 and they gained almost six yards per play uh, the total opened at 40 and a half closed at 42 and a half and again with those two touchdowns coming in the final two minutes it went over the total hey listen the bills i think are going to struggle against teams that stop the run they do face the eagles this week i think the eagles will be fired up and 
obviously the Eagles good against the run, sixth defending the run in yards rushing per game allowed. We'll see if the Bills can get it done on the ground. And uh, if they can't, then it's gonna be on Josh Allen's shoulders. Cardinals over the Giants 27 to 21. Daniel Jones was bad. He had the interception. He had the fumble. Three turnovers in all for the New York Giants. The Cards sacked Jones eight times. It's not all on him, but he did make mistakes holding on the ball too long. Kyler Murray, you know, he only went 14 for 21. I should say only threw 21 passes. He only had 104 yards, no touchdowns, but also no picks. And he's understanding what he's supposed to do out there. He's a game manager, obviously, when he has to create more and throw the ball more often because he, his team might be against other teams that are playing decent on the offensive end. It's going to be a situation where Kyler Murray, when he's got the ball on offense, is going to have to pick things up. But until then, they're just a team that is currently being coached well. Surprise, surprise, and Kyler Murray's playing well. Edmonds sure does make that a little bit easier, the job of Kyler Murray. 27 carries, 126 yards. That's about 4.7 yards per pop. Markley decent for the Giants, 18 carries, 72 yards, and a touchdown. Bad coaching. One of the bad coaching moves of the week this week, guys. New York Giants were down 24-21 to 21 with two and a half minutes to go, about 2.35 to go on the clock, down three. They had two timeouts. And they went for it on 4th and 15 at their own 33 instead of punting the ball. Now you're punting the ball if you choose to do so against a pedestrian offense with two and a half minutes to go and two timeouts. And they took themselves right out of the game. They didn't extend it. They went for it on 4th and 15. Did not get it. Bad coaching move by the New York Giants. 49ers beat the Redskins in a slop fest. It was rainy. It was nasty. 9-0 San Francisco. We had the Redskins. We got the win there. But 27 combined first downs was it for these first two teams. Here's the thing. Listen, I know it was storming and all that kind of good stuff, but Jimmy G is still game managing. We're going to see if he has to actually, if he can be successful when he has to actually pick things up and start to throw the ball a little bit more, see if his inaccuracy problems are going to rear their ugly head. He just went 12 of 21, 100. 51 yards and a pick on Sunday. Up next, they've got Carolina with an extra week to prepare, but they're 23rd against the run, so it's a situation where they might be able to run the ball a bit, and we won't see Jimmy G having to create with this passing game. And in fact, they've got Arizona the twice the next four weeks. Arizona 25th against the run. Seattle 17th, Green Bay 24th. They don't face a real good run defense until December 1st when they take on the Baltimore Ravens. After that, they take on the New Orleans Saints. So it still might be a little while before uh, we actually see Jimmy G having to do a lot more with his arm than he's done so far. Chargers lose to Tennessee 23-20. to Mr. Holdout Melvin Gordon can't punch it in on a couple of carries inside the one uh, closing minutes of the game. In fact, they had three plays around the one-yard line, couldn't punch it in. Uh, but we've talked about this since before the season began. The Chargers' offensive line is terrible, not good. Uh, Chargers had 39 yards on 1.9 yards per carry. Uh, Tanny Hill, 23 for 39, 312 yards, two touchdowns, one pick. Upgrade over Mariota for Tennessee. Texans and Colts did battle. The Colts win and cover 30-23. to Jacoby Brissett had to pick it up on the offensive end. He had to become more than a game manager. He certainly did that, 26 for 39. 326 yards, four touchdowns, no picks. Uh, Houston's put up big numbers. We talked about this. We had the Colts on Sunday, and we talked about in our analysis before taking on the horrible defenses of the Atlanta Falcons and the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, Houston, in their four games prior to those two bad defenses, averaged just 18.3 points per game. So there you go. They go up against Indy. Not so easy against that defense. They lose the game. Colts, by the way, off the win. They're laying six to Denver uh, this coming weekend. Only time this season where the Colts have been favored by more than one and a half when not an underdog, they lost outright to Oakland. So it'll be interesting to see if they can handle being in this rare role of being a decent size favorite, the Colts. Vikings over Detroit, 42-30. to Kirk Cousins on fire. Big game against Detroit. Guess what? His last three games since taking a tongue lashing from his own receivers. Kirk Cousins, 68 for 90. That's a 76% completion rate. 976 yards passing. 10 touchdowns. 
only one pick, and yet he only had Thielen on the, on, uh, for like two targeted passes. He caught one uh, because he did get injured. He hurt his hammy, was taken out of the game. Dalvin Cook had the big game on the ground. He had a couple of touchdowns and a buck 42 rush in the football. And of course, Diggs was nasty good uh, receiving the football. But listen, with about five minutes to go in the fourth, it was a 28 to 24 game before they were able to close out 42 to 30. Great play call. I talked about a real bad coaching move a little bit earlier with the Giants. Great play call by Minnesota. Uh, they're up 35-30 with about three minutes to go in the game. Second down and six inside their own 30 instead of a typical NFL conservative run play between the tackles to make it like third and four from a second and six and trying to run some clock. What do they do? They go deep on a play action. Cousins hits digs 66 yards later. It's first and goal at the Detroit five-yard line and they went on to carry the ball into the end zone. A player two after that, game over. Uh, Detroit run defense was bad again. They gave up 7.1 yards per play overall, not just running, but per play. Rams over the Falcons, 37 to 10. Jalen Ramsey was decent against uh, Julio Jones. He also had four tackles and one forced fumble. He wasn't even with the team for the entire week of practice. Still not great accuracy for Jared Goff, folks. 59% on Sunday. He did have two touchdowns and zero interceptions, but he was up against a really bad Atlanta Falcons defense. Against everybody else since the Super Bowl, right up until this week, that's seven games, he had seven touchdowns and seven picks. Uh, Gurley only 41 yards on 18 carries. Atlanta, a minus three turnover ratio. Listen, the window looks like it's closed on Dan Quinn. Atlanta in the last 38 games, 16 and 22 straight up, 12 and 26 against the spread. Ravens over Seattle, 30 to 16. Big game changer was fourth and two at the Seattle eight yard line. 90 seconds to go in the third quarter. Game tied at 13. And Baltimore went for it as Lamar Jackson pleaded to Harbaugh and said, let's go for it. Harbaugh gives his quarterback the confidence boost of, okay, we're going to go for it. Lamar Jackson runs the ball into the end zone on fourth and two from the eight yard line. Uh, the Seattle defense played the pass, which was odd. You're going up against Lamar Jackson. Seattle's defense played against the pass at the eight yard line on fourth and two, rather than having somebody at least spy on Jackson for a potential run. Jackson goes just nine for 20, 143 yards. 14 carries, 116 yards and a touchdown. Guy's not throwing the ball. He's not accurate. Harbaugh called it a lot of quarterback run plays. I just don't know if Jackson's career or this season is going to last real long if he keeps running the ball this much. And it's not his fault. I'm not blaming Lamar Jackson. He's doing uh, what he's being told to do and what the offensive play calls are uh, to use his talent, I guess, a little bit better. But quarterbacks in the NFL don't have long careers when they're running the ball as much as Lamar Jackson is. Raiders lose to Green Bay, 42-24. to Both teams over 480 yards of offense. Um, Oakland averaged almost 8 yards per play. Green Bay almost 9 yards per play. Oakland had 155 yards on 5 yards per carry. Uh, Derek, uh, if you saw the game, by the way, if you didn't, we've seen this before on a Derek Carr, runs the football at the Packer 2-yard line, fumbles it through the end zone. At the time, it was Green Bay 14-10, to two minutes left in the first half. Then, just a, a minute or so later, with about 20 seconds to go, Aaron Rodgers leads his team to a touchdown in the closing seconds of the first half. So you go into halftime, Green Bay up 21 to 10. If Derek Carr takes care of the football, his team could have been up 17-14, the game changer of the game. Sacked seven times in seven games. That's it for Aaron Rodgers. The offensive line is keeping his jersey clean. Ton of play action by the Green Bay Packers this year. Taking big time downfield shots off of play action. They're playing off the run. Good to see out of Green Bay if you're a Packer fan, I guess. Saints knock off the Bears 36-25. I had Chicago in this one. Uh, the total open 38 and a half, close 37. They scored 61. Saints 5-0 without Breeze. Chicago down 2-0 in that game as they gave up a safety. Anthony Miller fumbles inside his own 25. Saints get a first and goal. And Bridgewater, by the way, making all the right reads so far since filling in uh, for uh, Drew Brees. Anyway, after that, after they get the touchdown, then you got a Chicago running back and Montgomery fumbles at his own 25. Uh, Saints had pressure all day long on Trubisky. Horrible game plan of the week, by the way. Here it is. Horrible game plan of the week. Why in the world is Chicago running the ball just seven times all game? Remember, this was a 12-10 game 
at the break at halftime. So it wasn't like they were getting blown out and had to, you know, trash the running game and just throw like crazy. They only had seven carries from start to finish on Sunday. That is absolutely ridiculous. Horrible game plan of the week for the Chicago Bears. New Orleans pinned their ears back. They didn't get a bunch of sacks in the game, but they were always pressuring Trubisky start to finish. He had no protection. He had to throw the ball 54 times. Are you kidding me? You're the Bears? Come on. Run the football more than seven times. Trubisky throwing 54 times and you think you got a chance to win? Not going to happen. Anyway, by the way, Trubisky had two touchdowns and no picks. No fault of his own. It was the play calling that was terrible. The game plan coming from the sideline. New Orleans, a lot of creativity, by the way, with Taysom Hill. Uh, Murray for the Saints, 27 carries, 119 yards. Dallas Sunday night football, 37 to 10 over the Eagles. Once again, these Eagles on defense lack communication. I know they've had a lot of bumps and bruises, a lot of injuries. It's happened a few times this year, though. And poor tackling again. They were not ready to play. They got out gained 402 to 283. Dallas had 189 yards on 5.2 yards per carry. Elliott got a buck 11 on his own on the ground. And then we just saw on Monday night, the Patriots skunk the New York Jets 33-0. Pat's defense was the story of the game and no major offensive mistakes. The Jets, well, they stunk on ice. And here we go again. Sam Darnold, the young quarterback, having to face a Bill Belichick coach defense mismatch. Not an Adam Gase fan. Don't know why he was hired by the Jets. We had the under here on the uh, free video pick, so we were happy about the outcome staying under the posted total. That's your week seven NFL recap. We do it every Tuesday and of course makes these videos a little bit longer than most. But uh, again, uh, from all indication, about 90% of you have said you like the recap. So there you go. All right, uh, real quick again, before we get to the free pick, We've got NHL that'll be posted 1 o'clock Eastern time over at DocSports.com. Uh, we're crushing it right now in the NHL. In fact, we won again last night up 21 units on the season. 34 and 17 early season run October and November going back to the start of last year. We've got World Series Game 1. It'll be available at 11.30 a.m. Eastern on Tuesday. We do have a side in Tuesday's Game 1 clash. So Major League Baseball, NHL, and one NBA side. Three plays in all. One NBA side for Tuesday, which will also be posted at 1 p.m. Eastern time. Let's get to the free pick for Tuesday. It is Tuesday night NBA, and we're looking at a total. It's the Lakers at the Clippers. The total's come down a little bit to 225 and a half. We think it should go a little bit more. No Paul George for the Clips. And by the way, if you saw them, in the preseason, not that we put a, a ton of credence into preseason play, but these guys are not shooting the ball well at all. Struggling on the offensive end, I think there's got to be a little time for the chemistry to develop to be able to do a better job of scoring the rock. Simply put, they did not shoot well in the offensive end. They were inaccurate in the preseason. A little bit more intensity, I think, in this game. We're going to see also then most opening night games with LeBron going at it against, you know who, Kawhi Leonard, the defending champion, uh, coming over from the Toronto Raptors. So Anyway, our free pick on the video report for Tuesday under the total right now sitting at 225 and a half between the Lakers and the Clippers. It's going to do it for us. That's the long video. Hope you guys like these videos. Uh, hope you were with us over the last couple of days on the free video pick report as we're able to sweep the NFL picks the last two days. If you like the videos, click on that thumbs up button and be sure to subscribe. I do appreciate those who have done so thus far. I'm Scott Spritzer, DocSports.com. Let's put Tuesday in the win column right back here Wednesday. Much shorter video, 5 a.m. Eastern, 2 a.m. Pacific at the very latest. Best of luck on Tuesday.